Oh my goodness. I didn't know I had a fish. A yes, this is a netter. It's a six pounder. Hurry up. Hurry up. Hurry up. Butte, butte, butte. Holy cow, guys. Beauty. That one. Well, I'm going to show you real quick. This guy came on the new Gambler Komodo on the back of the chatter wagon. Gambler Komodo catches big ones, it looks like. 623. Oh, yes. yes there sir. we go. Right there, guys. Beautiful six pounder. All right, let's send this beautiful six and a quarter back. Thank you for biting. Thank you for biting. We're gonna see you later. Woo! What is going on guys? I'm Max from Moose Juice Fishing. And today I wanna to tell you guys about Chatterbaits and the brand new Chatterbait trailer that Gambler came out with. The new Gambler Komodo. I am so excited to show you guys this bait. I really love it. I've been trying it out on the water for the last few times. The bait has produced big fish, it's produced a lot of fish and I'm really excited. This is easily starting to become my new favorite chatterbait trailer. You know, spring's right around the corner and chatterbaits are a huge player in your springtime fishing. And Gambler just released a winner of a chatterbait trailer. And I wanna tell you guys all about it. So Gambler already has tons of great different chatterbait trailers between the Easy Swimbait series and with the Easy Vibe especially designed for it. Uh, burner crawls are one of my favorite to put on it in certain situations. And then even the flap and shad I like to use too. Um, the smaller and the bigger one, and even sometimes the super stud, they're a fluke style bait. But this Komodo has easily become my new favorite almost overnight after the first time using it. Uh, so let me show you guys this bait. So this right here is the Gambler Komodo. This bait is one of those fat like fluke style type trailers uh, with a fork tail and this thing is beautiful it has beautiful beautiful action in the water i love washing it um, the tail is you know it has a lot of action like a paddle tail more than most of your flukes uh, erratic but very natural looking with the fork tail one other thing i noticed on this bait that i think really helps is if you notice the ribs on it this is the front of the bait the ribs, you know, they're running this way, you know, the po they're pointing this way, but the flat sides on the front of the bait. So what that's doing is when this bait's traveling like this, the water's gonna catch on those flat sides and disperse. You know, it's gonna make a lot of water movement while this thing's going through it, even without a paddle tail. Um, a lot of vibrations, it just creates even more, you know, ruckus underwater. Those fish are gonna key in on. But this bait looks great underwater, very, very natural. It's a really awesome bait. I, you know, I'm, I was super excited when I first got a pack of them and was able to go use them. Uh, I used them out on the Headwaters Lake first thing. If you want to see that video, you can go to uh, Moose Juice Fishing, my channel, and check that one out. It's my most recent Headwaters video. But I think I caught 10 or 12 fish on this on the back of a chatter bait. And, uh, my big fish of the day came on this. A six and a quarter came on this one right here. In fact, I'll show you the bait. Still got it rigged up. Here it is right here. It's a green pumpkin Komodo sitting on the back of a three eighths ounce gold shiner jackhammer chatter bait. And this rig killed it. I mean, very, very much was awesome all day long. Um, here's one of my other favorite things about this. This bait is tough. This bait is really tough. You know why? This is the same bait. I use this same bait all day and look how good a shape it's still in. That's after 10 fish. You know, I didn't have to change out my trailer once, which really surprised me, honestly. You know, cause you know, if a bait lasts three or four fish, you know, that's a pretty tough bait. But this thing lasts about 10 fish, including a big old mean six and a quarter. I mean, this bait is awesome. I really, really, really love it. So Gambler came out with, I think, six different flavors of this bait. Of course, this is green pumpkin right here. And some of the other flavors I have, I currently have four of them. There's two others I don't have. They also have it in black and blue, like black with blue flake. They also have it in this ghost shad color. It's like a clear gray gold sparkle 
bluish. It's it's a very neat color. I'm actually really looking forward to this to throwing this in very clear situations. And this is gonna be probably my bait of choice on the new uh, stealth chatter bait, the one they came out with with the clear blade. This will probably be my bait of choice for that if I'm throwing it in clear, clear water. Yeah, I'm excited to try this color. I've never tried this as a trailer, this color, but I think it has a lot of great application. Then of course, I gotta have it in a white, white lightning right here. A uh, very great color, very common, you know, white chatterbait color is always a go-to trailer. Uh, very, very good, very versatile. The other two flavors they do have of it, they have a black with a blue tail, so it's gonna be probably similar to that black with blue flake one, but the tail will be blue. And then they have a hot swirl. That's for those guys that like to throw that fire crawl chatterbait, those all red chatterbaits. Or if you just want a red trailer in general, you know, that's the one for you. So the Komodo is definitely more of those fluke style, you know, a fat body fluke style uh, chatterbait trailer, which I really, really love personally. And to me, this is my favorite. Um, I love throwing, you know, like the easy vibes for a paddle tail one. A lot of people throw paddle tails though, especially on like those bigger pressured lakes. I love this style trailer. A lot of people are throwing paddle tails and this is just a different look. Um, when would I throw? Probably this style trailer is really anytime i mean clear water dirty water no matter what i love this style trail this is actually my preferred style uh my more recent videos probably seen me throwing a lot of paddle tail ones but i've just kind of been hooked on that one for a little bit but in general this is definitely my preferred style it's like this fluke style very natural looking in the water and you know very I don't want to say finesse, but more of like a subtle presentation compared to a big paddle tail that's going back and forth. And this is really more an erratic tail than the paddle tail too, because this tail, you know, will hop up and down, side to side, side to side. And the reason I think that tail has this much action too, I don't know if you can see, but it gets skinnier as you get towards the bottom of the tail, as you get towards the tail, and then the tail part gets fatter again. And just like the ribs I was mentioning earlier to make a lot of vibration, that is going to help this tail catch water and kick it all around. Um, and that's what gives you though, because it's not necessarily a paddle that's going to catch in similar positions every time, it's going to give you an erratic action that to me always looks more natural and gets more bites. It looks more like an injured bait fish. I guess when I say more natural, it looks more like an injured bait fish or something that's, you know, that you want those fish to key in on and go hunt down and eat. So I wanna tell you more about my color choice and of course, which chatterbait I'm throwing that on. So I basically throw two different chatterbaits. I throw black and blue sometime and I throw white sometimes, but my main two, especially here in Florida, are this gold shiner one and a green pumpkin. And to start with this gold shiner one, so as you see right here, I have a green pumpkin Komodo on the back of this gold shiner one. And I threw this, I was just throwing this exact rig in the headwaters. So that day, I only had one chatterbait rigged up. Usually you only have one chatterbait rigged up, but those fish I thought were gonna key in more on the bluegill and gold shiners rather than shad. And with the green pumpkin one, it allows it you know, to get that bluegill and gold shiner presentation to me with the white and gold and green pumpkin in the chatterbait and the gold blade. If you're in Florida, if you can find one with a gold blade, to me, Gold Blade excels over all the other colors. But that's a different note on a chatterbait. But yeah, I like this because, you know, I was fishing around fish that were eating gold shiners. They were in the pre-spawn, the almost spawn area. There was fish way up shallow. You know, I thought I saw one fish on bed, but, you know, I couldn't tell if it was just a fish that was really just using that white dot. That was probably a tilapia bed to ambush predators, or if that was a fish on a bed. But I love this uh, kind of set up whenever I'm doing that. Whenever I'm not, you know, I'm going to be fishing for fish that are both bulking up on gold shiners, but also defending beds from bluegill or really eating bluegill to bulk up as well. That is when I love to throw a green pumpkin on the back of even a white one or, you know, what's that green shad one, the one with the green and white on the bottom. Uh, that's when I really like to throw a green pumpkin on these. But that was my main reason for throwing a green pumpkin on the back of this. So when it really comes to fish that are spawning, and I'm fishing around spawning fish, that is when I like to go to my green pumpkin chatterbait. And with that, I'll either go with the black and blue uh, trailer or a green pumpkin trailer. So I pick the black and blue when the water is more tannic. You know, dark, dirtier, tannic water. I want this on the back of my green pumpkin one. Now, a lot of times I throw green pumpkin even in dirty water, 
compared to black and blue just because a i'm trying to usually find clearer water in florida but b it's just because to me you know you get this contrast of colors this is still a dark color that stands out in dirty water and the contrast to me really helps those fish find it even more the lake i'm going to tomorrow is really dark water so i'm going to do a black blue with this and the um and the green pumpkin one but when i get there if that water ends up being a little clearer than i thought it was i'm gonna end up throwing this green pumpkin one with it uh, to me it's something that you can't go wrong with either one in almost any situation but preferably in the darker tannic water i will like to put a darker trailer on my green pumpkin chatterbait that's where the black blue Komodo really is going to come in handy for me there and the green pumpkin is more you know if I'm fishing clear clearer water uh, stuff where I wouldn't normally fish a black and blue lure anyways that is when I'll probably switch to more green pumpkin but when the summertime does come you know summertime more of the deeper fishing more of a shad and gold shiner pattern that is when I will break out a white chatterbait or I'll put the white one on the gold shiner chatterbait now again this bait's only been out just for a little bit this new komodo so i haven't tried this with everything yet i know it's going to catch fish you know this thing is awesome like i've said I, I can't say enough about how much i like this i love throwing chatter baits and this bait has been awesome but if you're going to be fishing around shad more than white is probably the color you're going to want to go for on the back of yours um, i really am excited though to see other uses for this bait too i think the white is actually gonna be a very good bedding bait this year. I actually plan this spring to see a fish on bed. I'm gonna hook this thing up sideways like this with the hook coming in like this. And that I think will be a really good bedding bait. I, I, I'm excited to try this bait in some different techniques than what it's designed for. It's designed for the chatter bait, but I think it's got a lot more uh, things that can be done with it. I think this could be a great saltwater bait on a jig head. A lot of different things I'm looking forward to trying this bait but really this bait is awesome you know this is really my honest opinion with it there's not anything that I can really think about changing um, really nothing I mean to me this thing has all the action I'm looking for again I love how these ribs are going to disperse more water because of the way they're facing other than if it's facing the other direction it would be more you know sleek through the water this is going to disrupt it um, you know there's a lot of things to love about this bait and then the fact that again I caught 10 fish on this bait. I'm still going to be throwing it tomorrow. You know, it's like I had, I had no reason to take off that uh, trailer. You know, that thing's stuck through 10 fish. It's hardly even ripped up. It catches fish. I mean, it straight up catches them good. Uh, the Komodo is a sick, sick bait. And this is, this is going to be on my chatter bait day in, day out. The chatter bait is a bait I have tied up year round. Probably the Komodo will be on my boat year round as well. So guys, real quick, I do want to tell you too about my favorite rods to throw a chatterbait on and the setups I use for it. So right now, my favorite rod to throw it on is this TFO, Temple Fork Outfitters, Tactical Elite 7.4 Medium Heavy. It's a cranking series rod, so it's got a really nice soft tip to it, uh, but the medium heavy allows me to rip it out of the grass, which is what I love about this rod. It's soft to where it loads up when a fish hits, but still stiff enough to where I can rip it out. Uh, typically, I'm throwing it on 15 uh, to uh, 20 pound fluorocarbon. Usually, I'm throwing it on 16. Um, this is 16 pound fluoro. This is, again, my go to chatterbait rod. This is my chatterbait setup. This rod and reel has this bait tied on year round, either this one exactly or a different color. But this is my favorite chatterbait rod. Um, other rod that I'm just starting to throw it on that might become the new favorite is this the new TFO tactical glass rod. It's a, it's a part fiberglass rod. It's got a good tip to it. Again, medium heavy allows me to rip it out of the grass, still good. I've got this one on 15 pound fluorocarbon. I'm gonna be throwing two different chatter baits tomorrow. So I've got the two different rigged up. That's gonna rod I really like. Really when I'm picking a rod, uh, it's gonna be anywhere between seven and like 710 even I'll throw it on, but merely probably seven to seven six. I personally like a seven three, seven four for those rods. The seven ten I'll break out more when I'm throwing it on like shell bars and I'm breaking out a bigger chatterbait. Um, you can throw it on a medium heavy or heavy. 
Throw it on medium if you're not fishing grass, you know, it can fish on a medium rod. But really, I would be throwing it probably on a medium heavy rod, mostly to even a heavy, because when I like to fish it, I'm fishing it around grass. Uh, reel selection, I usually go anywhere between like a 7.1 to a 7.5. I like a faster reel so I can catch up after I rip it out of the grass. Uh, and talking about ripping out of grass, so when I'm fishing a chatterbait around hydrilla, eelgrass, any type of submerged vegetation, if my fingers are this grass, I'm gonna let this fit, I'm gonna let kind of my chatterbait ride slow, still cranking it, get in the grass so I can rip it out. And then, you know, I gotta catch up, get up the slack. And a lot of times when you rip it, or soon after, that's when you're gonna get your hit. You know, I'm trying to work it quick enough to where I'm just touching the top of the grass and when I get caught, I can rip it out. And that's really, I wanna work as slow as I can to keep it at the top of that grass. That's, that's how I like to work. Yes, are there times where you can burn it? Yes, and there are times where you have to just painstakingly slow roll it? Yes. But that day in, day out, the most way I like to fish, you know, is con good constant retrieve, little pop here and there, especially when it gets caught up in grass, rip it out of the grass, and usually that rip out of grass is when you're gonna get a hit. You're fishing area with no grass or in a pond, a lot of times you'll get hit, you know, when you pop it or something like that. It's similar action to when it gets ripped out of the grass. But guys, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you go out there and you get a new Gambler Komodo because I'd highly suggest it. If you're a chatterbait fisherman like me, it's a bait you should have in your tackle box, in my opinion. You know, it's different than a paddle tail. It's even something that if I'm catching a bunch of fish on a paddle tail, I might go back later to the same spot and throw the Komodo to get that slightly different action, get a few more bites. But thank you for watching the video. Um, really, the Komodo is an awesome, awesome bait. I'm super excited to use it this year and years on from now on. It's definitely gonna be probably a permanent stay on my boat just after a few uses of it. But everyone, thank you for watching. Uh, this bait is awesome. i tell you right now, the new Gambler Komodo is really an awesome, awesome bait. If you wanna see more videos of me using it, uh, subscribe to my channel, I'm Moose Juice Fishing. You know, go find it. You're gonna see me using this bait. I'm gonna be fishing the uh, Gator Division of the BFL tournaments this year if you like tournament fishing. I like to just go out there and have fun and catch fish. Do salt water, fresh water, anything that you can imagine, I'll try to do it. You know, subscribe to Gambler's channel. Uh, they make great videos all the time too. They post awesome stuff about new content or tips, all kinds of stuff that I always like to watch because I get to learn stuff. I get excited about their new baits they're coming out with all the time, so subscribe to them. But everyone, thank you for watching. And uh, yeah, you need to go get one of these Gambler Komodos because this thing is awesome. And to me, this thing's gonna be on my boat, tournaments, fun fishing all day, every day. I'm gonna find different uses for it. I'll share with you different uses about it. Um, you're gonna see me using it all the time on my channel. But thank you for watching everyone. And we will see you guys later. Peace.